Today, we're going to learn about rotating UV coordinates. Let's go. In episode 19, we talked in depth about sine and cosine nodes. And we talked briefly about using them for UV rotation. Today, I wanted to go a little bit deeper on that topic. So first, I'm going to show you the math uh, behind how rotating UVs work. And then we're going to use UV rotation in a couple of examples. So let's first create the rotation math. We'll start out with our texture coordinates and also a vector 2 that represents the center point or the pivot point for our rotation. And we also need a value that represents how much rotation we're going to do. So we'll just start off with a value of 0 here. Uh, before we go on, I can hear a bunch of you typing down in the comments, hey, there's already a node that does this. Why are we rebuilding something that already exists? And you're not wrong. If I do a search here for rotator, uh, I have a rotator node that does what I'm about to explain. And I also have uh, a custom rotator node that does even more. Uh, but the reason that I'm going to show you this is that I'm hoping you'll learn how the math behind this works and not just use these built-in nodes blindly. All right, so with that out of the way, I hope I answered uh, the, the post that you're posting down in the comments. Uh, let's go ahead and start building our UV rotation math. So the first thing that I need is a sine node and a cosine node. So we're just going to put these in here like this. And I'm going to pass my rotation amount value into both sine and cosine. The next thing that I need to do is subtract my center coordinate value from my UV coordinate. So I'm going to add a subtract node here. And for now, I'm just using values of 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Um, but we can make these center values whatever we want later. So I'm going to subtract out my center value. And then I'm going to split my UV coordinates using a component mask node into their individual U and V. And I know these say red and green, uh, but they actually represent our U coordinate and our V coordinate. Okay, now I'm going to take the cosine value here and I'm going to multiply it by my U coordinate. And then I'm going to do the same thing with sine. I'm going to multiply sine by my V coordinate. So what I'm trying to do is create a U and a V. And so this top row up here is going to represent my U. And then I'm going to make another bottom row down here that represents my V. So next thing that I need to do is add these two values together. So I'm going to add this and this. And this is going to be my U. And then I'm going to take these nodes here and copy and paste them because I'm going to do the same thing again. Now here, I took the cosine and multiplied it by uh, my U. But this time I'm going to take the cosine and multiply it by my V. And I'm going to take the sine and multiply it by my u. So on the top row, I did cosine and u and sine and v. And now I'm doing cosine u and sine and v. Anyway, so I inverted those. And instead of adding them together, I'm going to subtract the results this time. All right, so now I've calculated my u coordinate and I've calculated my V coordinate. And the last thing that I need to do, well, second to last thing, I need to append these two together. So now I have UVs. And then finally, the last thing that I need to do is add my center value back in. So here I subtracted out my center value. And now I need to add it back in. So I'm going to put an add here and just wire my center value over. And there we go. Now we've got uh, the formula for rotating UVs. So here's my texture sample. I'm going to wire that into my base color. And you know what? Let me just set this to be a cube. And I'm going to set my field of view to 50 degrees so it looks a little bit nicer. 
And now I'm gonna wire my UV coordinates into the UV slot of my texture sample. And boom, look at that, amazing. Nothing happens. <laughs> well, that's because I'm, I'm passing in a rotation value of zero. So I can also pass in a rotation value of one and boom, again, nothing happens. And that's because this value represents full rotation. So with a value of one, I've rotated it a full 360 degrees and gotten back to zero and it's giving me nothing. So if I want to rotate it 90 degrees, I'm going to take, I'm going to give it a value of 0.25. And now what you're going to see is this red corner over here is going to go uh, over here where the green corner is and boom, now it's rotated 90 degrees. Now I know this would be a little bit more clear to see what's going on if I passed an animated value in here. And so I'm just going to grab a time node and I know that I need to slow this down a little bit because if I give it time as it is, it's going to be going super fast. So I'm going to multiply time by 0.2 and then pass that in. And now you can see I've got my rotation going on. So time is a value that just continually increments and I can slow it down by multiplying it by a number smaller than one. So I'm passing time into uh, my rotation value here. And so I've got an animated rotation value. And now you can see I've got animated UV coordinates and that's how it works. So uh, you pass your rotation value, uh, use sine and cosine and multiply that by your U and your V value. Um, and then you invert them for the V and then append those together, add back in the, the center point and you've got your rotation. And I mentioned a minute ago, you could set your center point to whatever you wanted. Right now, we're rotating right around the center of our UV coordinates. But if I set these to zero, we can rotate around the top uh, left corner of our mesh, or I could set uh, one of them to one. Now we're rotating around uh, the bottom left corner, or if we wanted to rotate around the center left, uh, I can give it a value of 0 and 0.5. So I can adjust my center and put the pivot point of the rotation uh, wherever I want it to go. All right, now I'm going to jump out of Unreal for a minute and go over to Unity and show you the same thing there. And then we're going to come back to Unreal and I'm going to show you a couple of uh, more interesting examples of what we can do with this rather than just rotating it as it is. All right, so here we are in Unity. You can see that I'm using the same input values here. I have a value that represents uh, how much rotation I want to apply. I have my incoming UV coordinates and I have a vector two value that represents uh, the X and Y or the U and V center points for where I want the rotation to occur. So I add a, a cosine and a sine. And then for my UVs, I subtract out the center point and then I split them into their individual U and V coordinates. And then I multiply my cosine by my U and I multiply my sine by my V and then I add the results together. Then I multiply my cosine by my V and my sine by my U and subtract the results and then I combine my final U coordinate and my V coordinate into a single UV vector. And then finally I add back in the value that I subtracted out as the center point, And that becomes my rotating UVs. Now, one thing that I like to look at in Unity is uh, these individual UV coordinates that we're calculating. So if I look at the preview for my U coordinate, you can see it's animated there by itself. And if I look at my uh, individual UV coordinate for my V, you can see it's here rotating by itself as well. Now the rotation speed is the same on these obviously, but you might notice that they're offset by 90 degrees. And the reason for that is because cosine and sine are offset uh, from each other by 90 degrees. So that's just a cool observation to be able to take a look at our U and V coordinates individually here. I really like the way that Unity allows you to preview uh, a bunch of different things at once.
All right, well, let's jump back into Unreal and I'll show you a couple of things uh, that you can do that are kind of interesting with rotating UVs. So the first thing that I wanna show you is that you don't have to rotate every part of your UVs uniformly. Right now, all of the pixels in here are rotating the same amount at the same speed, but it is possible to pass in values that are different uh, depending on which pixel we're looking at. Uh, so let's, let's play around with that a little bit. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is create a mask. And so what I'm gonna do is add a vector length node, and this is gonna allow me to measure the length of a vector. And so what I wanna do is figure out how long it is from my pivot point to the current pixel that I'm rendering. So this value here, where I, I take my texture coordinates and subtract out the center, this is the vector that is uh, at that position. So I'm gonna wire this into the vector two on my length node. And let's let's just wire this into color to see what that's giving us. So you can see that my vector length node here is giving me the distance from my pivot point to the current pixel. So right there at my pivot point, I'm getting a value of black and then everywhere else, it's kind of fading out to, uh, to a higher value the further away from my pivot point that I get. Well, what I wanna do is actually the inverse of that. So I wanna add a, a one minus node to invert it. And if we wire this into color, uh, what you can see here is that now I'm getting white in the middle and then it goes out toward black toward the edges. Well, what happens if we take this value here and multiply it by our time value? I'm just gonna move these up out of the way and create a different time value here uh, just for the sake of, of this example. Uh, so let's add a time value in here. And I'm gonna multiply my time by this distance mask that I created. And so now what I'm getting is time is moving at a different speed depending on where I am on this, on this mask. So what's gonna happen if I plug this into my cosine and sine? All right, let's wire my texture sample back into the root and take a look. So <laughs> this is absolutely nutty looking. And the reason for that is because my time value is really high. And so what's happening here is this is getting twisted up like hundreds and thousands of times and getting me, giving me this result that's really crazy. So I don't want it to twist quite that much. And so what I'm gonna do is take my time node and limit it to a period of six. And now we, what we can see is that the pixels in the middle are, are rotating faster than the pixels on the edge. And the result is this crazy looking swirl. If we set our period to something lower, maybe three, you can see the center swirls really quickly and then the edges lag behind. And so it creates kind of this vortex effect. Because I've set my time node to a period of three, what's happening is once it does three rotations, it pops back and resets. Um, but you can see that my rotations now are happening at different speeds depending on, uh, depending on what pixel we're dealing with. I'm just curious what will happen if I set my center value to be something else. Yeah, now I'm swirling around this uh, upper center position instead of uh, the center. What if we set this to one, one? Now we'll be down in the lower right. So we're swirling around the lower right corner. Anyway, <laughs> you can get all kinds of really interesting swirls going on with this effect um, by using this vector length node and giving a different time speed value uh, for each of the pixels that you pass into the rotation. So that's kind of cool. Why don't we go back to what we had before and take a look at maybe a little bit more uh, practical example. The next thing that I wanna do is do some animated tree branches. And so what I'm gonna do is bring in a different texture here. 
we've been using this grid texture. And what I'm going to do now is bring in this texture, which is kind of a just a tree branch. So if you want to take a look at what that looks like, here's my tree branch with my leaves. And I've got the place where the branch connects with the rest of the tree. Over here at my 0 and 0 0.5 center position. Uh, maybe some of you can can tell where this is going. Uh, let's just move my uh, grid texture out of the way here and move my texture sample down. And what I want to do is I want to make this tree branch wave in the wind. So the first thing that I need to do is set my center because I knew I know that the pivot point that I want is over here at uh, 0 and 0.5, I think. Uh, let's just wire this up and see what we get to begin with. Yeah, you can see how it's pivoting around this point here, right on the edge of my tree branch. Now, obviously this rotation is a little bit extreme. Um, and actually, what I want it to do is wave back and forth instead of just continuously rotating. And so the way that I'm going to get that waving motion is with a sine wave. So let's add in another sine wave node here. So now I'm getting the sine of time. And let's plug this into my sine and cosine and see what we get. Okay, so um, obviously uh, time is going a little bit crazy here. <laughs> And so in order to slow this down, what I'm going to do is take my sine node here and I'm going to set my period to 6.28 and that's going to slow down my rotation a bit. So now what you can see is I've got my tree branch and it goes all the way around and then it stops and goes all the way back around the other way. And to limit the amount of rotation that I'm getting, what I can do is multiply the result of this sine uh, by a small number. And I happen to know for this particular example, I need a number of uh, 0.005. So now I can wire this as my rotation amount into cosine and sine. And what I'm going to end up with is a tree branch that is waving back and forth in the wind. So if I were to now apply this shader to my tree, I can maybe speed it up a little bit by changing the period of the sign. There we go. If I were to now take this shader and put these uh, textures as cards all over my tree, I would get tree branches that are waving in the wind. So that's, that's a pretty cool practical example. And in the next uh, couple of weeks, we're going to use uh, this rotation uh, for something even a little bit bigger. There's some other things that I need to co cover first, and so I'm going to be building up to something that we're going to look at in in maybe a month when I get all of the other prerequisites out of the way. We're going to put all these things together uh, and build something amazing, and rotating our UV coordinates is one of those things. So I hope you come back over the next couple of weeks as we build up to uh, creating something pretty cool uh, where uh, UV rotation is one of the pieces that we need uh, to put it all together. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you learned how to use uh, UV rotation to create a couple of different effects. And maybe you can even use it to create some unique effects of your own. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody and have a great week.